So something that so strange happened for this intro and the sound was horrendous. So this is just me saying that I'm going to be showing you a one pot meal that is perfect for those winter nights when you are planning on skiing, ice skating, going out in the snow or just out in the cold and coming home from a long day. This is something you can start in the morning and enjoy later that evening. So we are going to be making a stew and I hope you guys enjoy today's video. So this video and recipe is made in collaboration with Great Jones and they made this beautiful Dutch oven that you see me cooking with today. They make them in so many pretty colors and they have just beautiful, beautiful cooking ware. So I will have the link for them in the down bar below and a 15% off coupon code if you guys are looking for cookware. They have beautiful pieces. All right, so I started off by putting a generous amount of olive oil in the Dutch oven and letting it heat on medium high heat and then patting my meat dry before I tossed it in. Then as I let one side of the meat brown, I sprinkled some salt. I'm using Jacobson salt, which is so good. Um, and then also some just ground black pepper and then I'm gonna to toss it around and make sure to brown all sides. Then as I let the meat finish browning, I rinsed off the celery and chopped that up along with the onion. And you'll see once I get to chopping it that I just did a really rough cut. You can make it whatever kind of pieces you want in your stew. I like them to be big and chunky, but you can make them smaller if you wanted. Then once your meat has browned on all sides, you just want to put it in a separate dish for a second so you can saute up all your veggies. So I'm going to saute the celery and onions just for a couple minutes. Then once you've been cooking them for a couple of minutes, you want to add some garlic and I think I added around four or five cloves of garlic. And then you're also going to add tomato paste and mix that in. Once you add both of those things, you're going to add about a cup of either chicken stock or beef broth, whichever one you prefer to deglaze the pan. Next, you're going to wanna to add Worcestershire sauce. I always have a hard time saying that and i did coconut aminos but you could do soy sauce or low sodium soy sauce and i honestly always eyeball it but i'm going to be posting the recipe down below for you guys because i am a recipe follower and not a recipe creator um but yeah i always eyeball it i use a recipe as like guidelines and then i just do whatever feels right and while I was talking, I added in thyme and dried rosemary. You're supposed to use fresh, which I thought I had, but I didn't. So I just used dried rosemary and added like, I don't know, 10 sprigs of thyme. And I always just throw them into the pot and try not to mix them in too much. And then it's easy to grab the stems out at the end when they're done cooking. And then I'm just roughly chopping up some potatoes. I didn't peel them. You could peel them if you wanted to. I peeled my carrots, but not my potatoes. And then I just do, like I said, I like big chunky um, pieces in my stew. Then they don't get too soggy. And it's nice to just have like a good spoonful. It feels hearty. Then once you've added in your potatoes and carrots, I just added in enough stock to basically be level with the food. And I added back in my stew meat 
and as you can see it's basically just at the same level as the food so not above or too much below and then you want to put your stew meat in the oven on a low temperature i did 230 and you can do it between like six and eight hours or even a little bit more i did seven hours and everything was perfectly tender hey friends it's about seven or so hours later i'm obviously dressed in comfy clothes um i consider putting my dress back on just for the video but i'm 38 and a half weeks pregnant thought i'd give myself a break and stay in comfy clothes um we are going to finish up the recipe and I am taking it out a little sooner than eight hours. It should still be fine and super tender and everything. Um, my son just needs to go to bed at a certain time and I didn't have quite enough time to leave it in. So once it's been whenever six to eight hours or so, you wanna take it out of the oven, put it on the stove top, have it going on about medium heat on the stove top and you're going to make a starch mixture of I did one tablespoon starch, one tablespoon water, mix it together, add that to the stew just to thicken it up a little bit. And while you have that going and simmering and letting it thicken, then you want to add peas. You can use frozen peas, but I prefer fresh and you can like always find fresh peas at Trader Joe's. I don't know if all supermarkets have fresh peas. But Trader Joe's like always does um, and I just like them better and they have more of a crunch instead of being mush and then as you can see the thyme sprigs come out so easily if you kind of just let them like be bunched together the whole time you also want to chop up some parsley I don't know I probably did like half a cup of parsley um, and you guys can see my little cooking pal <laughs> in this video and then you're just going to let this cook for about 15 to 20 minutes and let everything thicken together and meld together and then i'm doing a taste test to see if it needed salt or anything i thought it was good so then i'm serving it up for dinner but you can add at that point more coconut aminos or worcestershire or salt or pepper or anything you think it needs and here we are just praying as a family as you can see addison's still working on his skills of praying before eating but that's okay <laughs> and yeah i hope you guys enjoy this meal and thank you so much for watching today's video don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and thank you again great jones for collaborating with me